The Lord has uh, blessed me with a, a lovely library of missionary biographies, and one of the little books that's hidden away in my on my bookshelf is one on the life of Martin Boos. Martin, this uh, particular story, this uh, biography, is written by Arno Gabeline. Martin Boos was born on Christmas Day, 1762. And uh, he was born on the border of Bavaria. And from an early day, he wanted to be a clergyman. His parents died when he was just four years old. He was raised by an uncle. And his uncle paid for him to study. He became a Carthusian friar. And he was renowned for his... Uh, supposedly pious life. Uh, he writes, I lay for years, even in the winter season, upon the cold ground, though my bed stood near me. I scourged myself unto blood and mortified my body with a shirt of hair. I suffered hunger and gave my bread to the poor. I spent every leisure hour in the church or in the cemetery. I confessed and communed almost every week. In short, I was so pious that the ex-Jesuits and students of Augsburg unanimously elected me to be the prefect of the congregation. I sought by force to live upon my good works. And so this was the, this was the life he was living, and he says no one ever shared with him the glorious truth that the just shall live by faith. And um, as he recounts the story, he tells that on a, an occasion in the year 1788, he went to visit a humble soul who was on her sickbed and soon to die. And he said to her, you certainly may die very peacefully. Why so, she inquired. Because you have lived so piously and holily he replied. The sick woman smiled at what I said and rejoined, Where I do die confiding in my piety, I know to a certainty that I would be damned. If I'm trusting in my own piety, I don't stand a chance. He later on described the engagement with this woman uh, she responded to him, he says, in a tone of astonishment. What a pretty divine you are, she said. What a miserable comforter. What would have become of me? How should I be able to stand before the judgment seat of God, where we must give an account of every idle word? I should certainly be lost if I built happiness and heaven on myself my own merits or piety. Who is clean among the unclean? Who is guiltless in the sight of God? Who is righteous if he were to impute sin? If thou, O Lord, shouldst mark iniquity, who shall be able to stand? Which of our actions and virtues would be found of full weight were he to lay them in his balance? No, if Christ had not died for me, if he had not atoned for me and paid my ransom, I should, with all my good works and pious life, have eternally perished. He, she said, he is my hope, my salvation, and my peace. So Martin Booz was, he was astonished, and he was ashamed of himself that after all his study, he had never discovered the gospel truth that he heard from the lips of this old dying woman. But he was humble enough to acknowledge that, that this was the message he needed. And, and he put his trust simply in the Lord Jesus. And he began to preach the gospel in the Catholic Church. And Astoundingly, people came from all over to hear the message, and multitudes of them put their trust in Christ. Now, as the message spread, he received a great deal of persecution. 
Nonetheless, as time went by, God greatly used him. He tells us that in the year 1795, it was a year of jubilee. In other words, according to the Church of Rome's custom, they promised that those who made a general confession of sins of their whole life, a general and complete absolution would be made. In other words, this being a year of jubilee, according to the Catholic Church, you could have all your sins dealt with. And this caused a stir. Many people were traveling wherever they could go to make confession, and multitudes, hearing that Martin Boos was preaching a way that you could have peace in your life, you could have certainty, they traveled to hear him speak. And day after day, night after night, he preached to churches full of people who were seeking to hear the gospel. Um, You know, it's just remarkable to, to see that here was a man who lived his whole life in the Catholic Church, but who preached the gospel, was persecuted for it, had to give answer to it time and time again, and yet God preserved him. He died at a relatively early age. I think he was maybe 67, uh, 63 when he died. And yet, who knows how many thousands of desperate souls who could not find peace in the activities of the church, in their own good works, in their own piety, found peace through the blood of the cross by putting their simple trust in the Lord Jesus. And so, although Martin Booz was used to present the gospel across uh, Germany and Austria and and the rest of Europe. People traveled great distance to hear the gospel from the lips of this Catholic priest. Yet we can trace it back to a dear woman who on her dying bed faithfully shared with him the gospel and told him that the way she could die in peace was not according to his words, but according to God's word, that The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. And through this, she had found peace with God. We cannot make peace with God. But thankfully, we do not need to make peace with God. Because he made peace through the blood of his cross. And by simply trusting in the finished work of Christ, in the value of the life of Christ given for us, and then the power of the life of Christ given to us, we have the secret of peace with God, of fellowship with God, of forgiveness of sins, of a new life given to us. And it all comes to us by grace through faith. It's not of ourselves. We do not deserve it. We receive this gift simply as a kindness of God, as a the goodness of God in providing for us a Savior in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, may you be encouraged, and perhaps you could take a little time to pray for those who are still in many of these religious systems, that the light of the gospel will shine into their hearts, and maybe even save some priests who will begin to preach the gospel. For in the very last days in the history of the world, We read God appealing to Babylon, the great religious system, come out of her, my people. There will still be people who have been saved in that great system, not through it, but in spite of it, had responded in faith to the gentle and gracious words of the Holy Spirit to their heart to repent and believe the gospel.